In the last lecture, we learned how the real DOM gets re-rendered whenever the state in a component changes. Now, in this lecture, let's have a closer look at child component revaluation whenever a state in the parent component changes. Let's go to VS Code. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new component and I will move this pen element inside that new component. So for that, inside this components folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new folder. Let's call it UI. Inside this UI folder, I'm going to create another folder. I'll call it span. And inside this span folder, we will have the span component. I'll call it span.js. Now, the first thing which I'm going to do here is I'm going to import react object from react library. Then let's create a function. Let's call it span. So this is going to be our component function. And let's also go ahead and let's export this component function as default. Now from within this span component function, we want to return something. And here we want to return a span element. So I'll copy this span element from here and we will return it from this span component. Now here we don't have this count variable. So let's say for this span component, we will receive this props. And on this props, we have this children property. So whatever we will specify within the opening and closing span component that will be assigned to this children property of this props. With this, let's go ahead and let's use this span component in our demo component. So instead of using this HTML span element, let's use our custom span component. And in order to use this custom span component, we also need to import it from this file. Let's also provide a closing span tag. And within this, let's use a set of curly braces. And inside this curly braces, I want to use this count state variable. With this, if we save the changes, if we go to the web page, our application should still be working as expected. So when I click on this plus button, it is incrementing the value of the count variable. When I click on this minus button, it is decrementing the value of this count variable. But if you notice, when we are clicking on this plus button or minus button, it is going to change the state inside this demo component. So it is going to change this state. And we have learned that whenever the state of a component changes, it will reevaluate that component function. So here, whenever we click on this plus button or minus button, it is going to change the state of this count variable. So every time the state of this count variable changes, it is going to reevaluate this demo component function. And then we also passing that value, that state value to this span component and inside this span component we are using that value we are displaying that value so if i go to the web page and if we open developers tool inside this elements tab let's expand this body section inside this we have this div let's expand this div so here we have our span element so when i click on this plus button you will notice that this span element flashes as you can see because here the value has changed so that's why this span element has flashed. If I click again, again, this span element will flash. So basically, even though the state is changing in the parent component, that change we are rendering in this span component. That means inside the child component using props. So here, when the state is changing, the demo component is reevaluated. It passes the state to child component using props. And in there, we are rendering a new value of the count variable within these span elements. Now we learned that whenever the state changes, the component in which we are using it, that component gets reevaluated. It gets re-executed. And to prove this, what I'm going to do is inside this demo component, I am going to use a console.log statement. And here, let's say demo executed. And inside this span component also, let's go ahead and let's use a console.log statement. And here, let's say span executed. Okay, if I save the changes, if we go to the web page, let me go to the console tab. Let's clear everything here. Let's also refresh the page and let's clear everything here. So when I click on this plus button, you will see that the demo component has executed because in the demo component, the state has changed and the span component has also been executed because in the span component, the value of this props.children has changed. If I click on this plus button again, again, 
both demo component and the span component has been executed. Now we are seeing these messages two times because if I go to the VS code and if I open index.js file here, you will see that we are calling this app component within strict mode. And when we call this app component within strict mode, at that time, whenever the state changes, the component function gets executed twice. If I remove this strict mode from here, and now if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, now you will notice that when I click on this plus button, the state has changed. So now the messages are only being displayed one time. So first the demo component was executed, and after that the span component has also been executed. And also the messages are being shown only once. Earlier we were using the app component within strict mode. So within strict mode when we use the app component, it executes a component function twice whenever the state changes. Now what will happen if inside this demo component the state changes but the value of this props in the span component does not change. So here what I'm going to do is instead of passing the value of this count state variable I will simply pass 10. So in that case this 10 will always be assigned to this props.children. So whenever the state will change inside this demo component it is not going to change anything in the span component. Okay so with this if we save the changes if we go to the web page let's clear everything here let's reload the page so you will see that here the value 10 is displayed. Now when I click on this plus button here the demo component has been executed and also the span component has also been executed. If I click on this plus button again, again both demo component and span component has been executed. So why is that? That's because when the state in this demo component is changing, that means when the value of this count variable is changing, it is going to reevaluate this demo component. So this demo component will be re-executed. And in this demo component, we are calling this span component. We are using it like an HTML element, but internally it is going to call this span component function. Okay, so that's why we are seeing this message span executed, even though nothing is changing inside this span component. And since nothing is changing inside this span component, if I go to the web page and if you go to this elements tab, let's expand this body section again. Okay, so you will notice that when I click on this plus button, nothing is happening here in this elements tab. Nothing is flashing here. That's because in the DOM, nothing is changing. Even though in the component, in the demo component, the state is changing, but we are not rendering that change in the DOM. Right, we are not using this count variable anywhere to display it in the web page. So we are not rendering that change in the DOM. And that's why, since we are not rendering any change in the DOM, we are not seeing anything flash here. Okay, so since nothing has changed in the real DOM, the real DOM will not be touched, no matter how many times I click on this plus button or minus button. So as we learned earlier, even though a component function is re-executed, does not mean that the real DOM will also get re-rendered. The real DOM will only get re-rendered whenever there is some change, and that too, the real DOM will be re-rendered only at those places where there is something changed. So remember that whenever a component is re-executed, all its child components will also get re-executed because using a component function like an HTML element simply means calling that component function. Now this brings up a very important question. Isn't this bad? Because if all the child component functions are re-executed even though nothing has changed, that's a lot of ongoing function execution. And with that, the virtual and real DOM comparison, which certainly cost performance. So isn't this bad? Because there is no actual reason for components to be re-executed and virtual and real DOM comparison because nothing has changed. Of course, it's bad and it's total waste of re-executing the component function and all its child component functions. So in the next lecture, let's see how we can prevent unnecessary component evaluation. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.